John, <clears throat> John chapter 14, verse 1. Let not your, what? Heart. Heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. That's what Jesus told us. He told us not to let our hearts be troubled. No matter what you see around us, no matter what happens that involves us or involves our families or our neighbors or people we work with or whatever, he told us, let not your heart be troubled. Now, that's easier said than done, isn't it? Because we live in a real world, and all around us we see things happening, and we see things happen to people we love, we care about. But only God can change those things that we cannot change. So we're not to dwell on those things that we can't change. I mean, if you focus on them, then all your energy, everything is on that. Yeah. And God told us to focus on Him. Amen. If we focus on Him then he will perfect those things that concerns us. So if, if we're allowing that to happen, when those moments of, of um, those moments come that we begin to reflect on things that can pull us down, that can trouble our hearts, if we reflect on them, then we've took our eyes off of him. And so we have to quickly shift and get our eyes back on him. And I'm talking about myself too, okay? Because I, I preach to myself too. But knowing that Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. See, Jesus was lining us up so that we could not only trust God, but trust him too. Because if we trust God, we need to trust Jesus. And right here, you know, in Jesus' teachings, he, he would talk to the disciples about who the Father was. My Father. He always, my Father. Father, okay, and right here you're beginning to see him shift because he's preparing us for what's about to take place. Now look at verse um, 27 in chapter 14. Jesus said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled. There it is again. Neither let it be afraid. We're going to see things that are going to happen all around us that if it were not for what we know, about God, we would be so troubled. We'd get into that vein of fear. People around us are going to wonder, why aren't you afraid? Why, why aren't you dismayed? Why, how can you be calm in this? And they're going to be drawn to you to where they will be able to say, what is this? What is this that you have that I don't have? And that's going to be your golden opportunity to say, let me tell you about Jesus. Let me tell you about my Heavenly Father. Because without Him, you couldn't have peace. Without Him, you would be afraid. None of us are just a mountain unto ourselves, doing our own little thing, our own creating our own little world, doing our own little thing. Because the end is going to be the end. And it's only by the grace of God that any of us are able to do anything. Listen, we're all going to die. I look at people 
out here now, I look at, I look at life and death in a, a different vein, and I know Barbara does too now. And anybody who has had anyone that they loved leave this planet, you can't help it but to look at people and go, wow, one day they, they won't be here either. So what are you going to do while you're here? What legacy are you going to leave behind you? What are you going to do? Are people going to remember you as that mean old nasty hateful aunt or uncle or, or grandpa or grandma, that old mean old person that argued with everybody and, and Lord's taken him in another vein and said, we'll go, okay? Or are they going to remember you as somebody who loved God with all your heart? And the peace of God was inside of you in all the crisis and things that you went through. All the hurt, the heartaches, the things that have, where Satan has tried to drag you down, step on you, hurt you, destroy you, take your life. But yet in the middle of everything, you have something the world seeks desperately. And they don't know where it is. They don't know how you got it. So be aware of your surroundings and know that there are people hurting everywhere you go. Be an opportunity to be a vessel so you too can say, this peace I have is from above. It's nothing I did. I just received it. Because that's what you did. When you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you received that peace. So if we need to repent, let's repent. Let's get it right. Let's turn it around and let's get headed down that path we're supposed to go down. Let's do what God's called us to do. Let's be peacemakers because he's given us peace. Yeah, that's right. Amen? Amen? Look over at John chapter 16. Verse 33. Verse 33. Jesus, again talking. These things I have spoken to you. Look at this. That in me, in Jesus... You may have peace. In the world, you will, you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. He hadn't even gone to the cross yet. But he already spoke it, didn't he? He spoke what was about to happen. It's like when we stepped out here today and I stood there on that porch and it was just like this. It was just an unction from the Holy Spirit. I believe within six months we're going into our own building. I don't know where. I don't know. No, no details. I just know that's what I, was in my spirit. Hallelujah. I'm looking forward to that. Another adventure. Yes. <laughs> Now let's go back to John 16, verse 22. Therefore, you now have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart will rejoice, and your joy no one will take from you. Still Jesus talking. What an awesome encouragement that is to know that nobody can take your joy you can give it to them if you want to you know sometimes as being Christians and being spirit filled sometimes we, when we get tired I find it comes for me it comes when I get tired if I'm tired and I'm a little bit too busy we all get busy 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 I get too busy and I'm tired and out of my flesh, 
I will hear my voice speak things that shouldn't be spoken. Well, I have to stop and repent because that is my peace that I am allowing Satan to take from me. So if I need rest, I'm going to rest. Be good to yourself. Be good to your body. You need rest. You can't do everything. I finally got it through my head. I can't do everything. I mean, I could, but that's not what God wants me to do. We all have something to do for God in this kingdom, in this place we're at right now. We all have something that we need to do for him. It may be a smile. It may be one sentence of encouragement. There is something everybody can do so that people can see Jesus in you. Therefore, you now have sorrow, but I will see you again. And your heart will rejoice, and your joy no one will take from you. And in that day, you will ask me nothing. Most assuredly, I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, in my name. You see the shift? See, he's showing how he and the Father are really one. He's showing us the shift. I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. He, the Father, will give you. So when you pray, you pray, praying is asking, it's talking, it's verbally expression. And you're talking to the Father, you're asking Him to help you. Or whatever is on your heart, you're asking and you ask according to his word in Jesus' name. The Father, Jesus, said it. The Father will give it to us. Sometimes we let troubles and trials and tribulations get to us that we put that over here. Instead of saying, your words, I like to remind God of your word, of his word. I tell him, your word says right here that if I ask in Jesus' name, Father God, Daddy, Daddy God, that you will give that to me. Now, I'm not going to ask him for a mink stole that hangs down to the ground that... Uh, the Queen of England wears, I'm not going to ask him for stupid stuff. I don't care less about that. But you know, sometimes we ask God for stupid stuff and he will actually let us have the stupid stuff just to show us you didn't really need it anyway. Verse 24. Until now, you have asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you will receive. Joy. May be full. And another place in the Bible talks about when you ask, ask believing so you can receive. Now let's go to John chapter 17, verse 13. I love, I love the book of John. 
John chapter 17, verse 13. And he's still Jesus talking. I love it. But now I come to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I'd rather have God's joy in me than I had the joy of the world, because that, that is temporal. I'd rather have his joy any day. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they are not of the world. We're not of the world. We're bought with a price. We belong. Where do y'all belong? <laughs> okay. Okay. Now, watch this. Just as I am not of the world, I do not pray that you should take them out of the world. How many times do you hear people say, well, God took them. Well, I don't know that that's really true. Jesus doesn't pray that we leave. He prays that we fulfill what we came to do, and then when our time is, that's when we go. But that you should keep them from the evil one. That's an awesome prayer, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, that you pray for me that the evil one touches me not. See, he's our intercessor before God. He intercedes for us. They are not of the world just as I am not of the world. That is awesome. That is incredible. All this, you know, all this E.T. and all this science fiction. I like science fiction. I really do. I always have. <laughs> I like looking at other worlds and other planets, and, and usually I'll find something spiritual in there. I'll pick out something from all the garbage that's there because we don't know everything. And I think about those writers and, and, uh, and the actors. The actors get into the role playing, but the writers... They have to have some kind of inspiration. The devil knows the things of God. He knows what's in the universe. He knows. And everything the devil does is perverted. So when you see these mangled Star Wars characters, in my heart, I do not believe God ever created anything like that. I really don't. I see strange little animals in the world, but that's what they are. They're not, as we look as having a spirit inside of them, like we do, you know? They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth, the truth of the Word of God. The living Word of God is truth. And the living Word of God is what will conform us and change us and help us. Your Word is truth. And for their sakes, for essence, y'all say essence, for our sakes. <laughs> Well, that's a Tar Heel word, I guess you might say. I was raised in North Carolina. I was raised in North Carolina, okay. <laughs> well, you say us and youngins. <laughs> we are youngins. <laughs> okay. And for their sake, I sanctify myself. See, Jesus did it all for us. So that we or the fruit coming forth out of his ministry. Oh, 
awesome. And there are people that come forth as fruit out of your ministries. Isn't that awesome? It's reproduction. For their sake I sanctify myself that they also may be sanctified by the truth. I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. There's your evangelist out preaching the gospel, y'all. That's essence. That's essence. <laughs> We're products of that right there. And because somebody allowed God to use them, the gospel continued and continued and continued through the years. If it had quit when Jesus went to the cross, we wouldn't be here. Somebody had to preach the gospel. Somebody had to show us the truth. Somebody had to open their mouths and do something. Somebody had to write. Somebody had to do something. And it says, through their word. So that tells me, talking. See, you never know who you're talking to. You never know what they're going through. Just like last Sunday when that, that girl was here. And she just spoke up and she said, well, I'm broken hearted. Her heart was broke. But she came. And she had trouble getting here, but she found us. She even said she didn't know how she found us because she got on the wrong roads. But see, God wanted her here where she could be loved on, where she could the word could be spoken to her, where she could be ministered to, loved on. That's how much God loves us. That's how much he loves the people around us. that they all may be one. Look at that. Jesus is telling us we can be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you. And look at that. Let your mind think on that a minute. The God of the universe, how big he is. How in the world can he be inside of Jesus? Well, you're thinking that mortal man standing there. No. The Spirit of God is huge. The Spirit of Jesus is huge. The Holy Spirit is huge. And He holds us. Just think about that. The Holy Spirit just cradles us. Oh, that is so incredible to think about that. that they also may be one in us. Father, Son, Holy Ghost, and essence. <laughs> That's what it says. That's what it says. <gasps> so let not your heart be troubled. Listen, it don't matter how much money some of these folks have got where they stand up and they say, look at me, look at me. I got gold all over my, all over my, um, what do you call it, my doors and my sinks. and That's nothing. They don't have what you have. What you have is priceless. Jesus paid the price. So for us, we can freely give so that others can receive. Heaven can be populated and hell can be plundered. That in the world, that the world may believe that you sent me. And the glory 
the glory which you gave me. That glory is the presence of God. Oh, it is so wonderful when he just taps you on the shoulder, puts his arms around you, and you just you just want to cry, and you don't know why you're crying. You're just crying. It's because that presence is so sweet. That glory of God. The world doesn't understand it. They don't experience it. But you do. You have the answer that man and the world is looking for. You have it. We have it. That's something to be full of joy about, to be happy about. I see, you know, when you, you go through the television channels on Sunday morning, you've got church, 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 and they're standing there, amazing grace, how sweet the sound. And then you go, amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Oh, so different. They just don't know, and they don't have what you have. But they're seeking, or they wouldn't be where they are. So you don't want to cut them down. You want to love them. Love draws. And it's the love of God in you that draws them. Verse 23. I in them and you in me, that they may be perfect in one, that the world may know that you have sent me and I have loved them as you have loved me. Think about that. Think about how much God loves his only begotten son. And Jesus loves us the same way except we're not the only ones. He's got lots of kids. Lots and lots and lots because of his obedience. Because he was willingly willing to lay down his life. Because he looked beyond the cross and he saw all of us and the others to come. There's more to come. Way beyond the cross. Verse 24, Father, I desire, now see, he's asking, he's asking our Heavenly Father. He's asking his daddy, Daddy, I sure would like it. I desire <laughs> that they also whom you gave me, We are those people who God gave his son. We are given to Jesus. You gave me, may be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which you have given me. For you loved me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world has not known you, but I have known you. That's a father-son relationship. There's some of you fathers that you don't know your sons, and there's some of you mothers don't know your daughters. But God knew his son. But I have known you and these have known that you sent me. And I have declared to them your name, and I will declare it that the love with which you love
loved me may be in them. You need to point to yourself because the love of God is in you when you're born again. The love of God is in you because God answered that prayer for Jesus. He answered the prayer for Jesus with which you love me may be in them and I in them. Go figure that one out. Welcome, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know this is going on the web, and I just want to say this, because I know that in this room there are believers, but there are people out here looking at this, and I want to tell you something. Quit blaspheming the Holy Ghost. You've got to stop it. If you don't know him, you better stop it. You better repent, and you better ask God to show you the truth. I guarantee you he will. Amen. John chapter 17, verse 6. I have manifested your name in men whom you have given me. Out of the world, they are yours. You gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Hallelujah. Awesome. Awesome things that Jesus was telling us. Incredible things that we don't lose our joy, that we stay encouraged, that we know there's a difference. We are different. I don't belong in this world. I'm here until whenever. When it's time, I'm gone. I'm coming back with Jesus. That's what the Word says, that He's coming back. He's coming back with who? The saints, the ones that have gone on. He's coming back with them. Let's go to Acts chapter 1. See, Jesus, knowing that with him being gone, how quickly the wolves would come in and try to steal the teachings and the things that he had taught the disciples and the other people. Remember, he taught multitudes of people. He didn't teach just the 12. He taught multitudes of people. So the word of God went out and people found out that, hey, this is different than what I've, the rabbis have been teaching me and the teachers and, and these others, the Pharisees and Sadducees. I'm hearing different things. But inside of me, I like this because it's reality, it's truth. Truth has a way of, of, of permeating your spirit to the point to where you realize that this is truth. I, I know this is truth. I don't understand it, but I know it's truth. And that's what Jesus was doing. He was demonstrating the love of Almighty God. He was demonstrating that there is life to come. There is more to come. You don't just live and die and that's it, it's over. There is more. But he also knew we had to have some help because of who we are. Had I not been baptized with the Holy Ghost, I don't think I'd be standing here today. I struggled going to church for years. I struggled in and out of the Methodist church, the Baptist church, Church of Christ, unity, just looking, looking, searching. And what I needed was the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I needed the helper in my life to help me. Without him, I couldn't make it. And Jesus knew we needed that. He tells us in John chapter 14 that he would pray the Father and he would ask and he would send the helper, which is the Holy Ghost, and the Holy Ghost would teach us all truth. When truth has come, we change. 
Our human spirit is set for change and for truth. And when truth comes, we embrace it because we're hungry for truth. Jesus said, I am the way, I'm the truth, and I'm the life. Acts chapter 1, verse 4. And being assembled, now this is after he's already gone to the cross, he's already come back and he's seen the disciples and they were fishing and, and all of that. And he told Simon, he said, Why, are you, going, you love me? You love me? Yes, Lord, I love you. We asked him three times. Yes, yes, you know I love you. Well, feed my sheep. He didn't have a herd of sheep somewhere. He had people that needed to have a continuous diet of the Word of God. And how was Peter going to give it? There weren't no Bibles written. How was he going to feed them the things of God with what little bit, little bit of time? Three and a half years he's with uh, Jesus. He was supposed to be able to feed a flock of, of human beings that always got questions. The Holy Spirit is our teacher. And the Holy Spirit will teach you things, mysteries and things that you don't know, things you don't understand. Peter had to have the Holy Ghost. They all had to have it to be effective. But that was not limited to just the 12. There was 120 who stayed in the upper room, who stayed. There's, I don't know how many it was that left. How many got tired and said, Terry, and I'm tired, I'm going home, Jesus died on the cross, that's it. It's over with. I'm just going home. Go back fishing. Go here. Go there. But you had a faithful few that stayed. And that faithful few were filled with the Holy Spirit. The teacher came to help them so they could teach others. This Bible was written inspiration of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Acts chapter 1, verse 4. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, It's not for you to know the times or seasons. Right now, you've got people saying, oh, yeah, 2012, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Well, there were other years that they said, oh, yeah, it was that year, oh, yeah. You don't know. The Bible says you don't know. Only God knows the timing. You'll see the seasons and the signs, but you won't know the timing. He tells us to be ready. He tells us people will be marrying They'll be having babies. They're not going to stop and say, okay, it's 2020. Okay, here I am, or 2012. Here I am. Beam me up. That's not going to happen. It's foolishness. And they err because they don't know the Word of God. They know God's coming. They know He's coming back. He is coming back. He is coming back. Okay, verse 5, For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. 
Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel to Israel? And he said to them, It is not for you to know times and seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. Even Jesus doesn't know the time and season. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and in America and to the ends of the earth. America is not left out of that. South America is not left out of it either. Verse 9. Now when he had spoken these things, while they watched, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, who also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up to heaven? This same Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. It's going to come back the same way he went. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Let's go over to Daniel chapter 7. Daniel chapter 7, verse 13. I was watching in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man, coming with the clouds of heaven. He came to the Ancient of Days. And who's the Ancient of Days? It is God. He came to God. Jesus came to God right there. And they brought him near before him. Then to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom. See, you, you can take those scriptures right there and you can meditate on them and meditate on them and ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to you those, those words and things that are there and I guarantee you, you'll get some fresh revelation on the word that all peoples we're in that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom the one which shall not be destroyed. There is life after death. Go to Revelation chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1, verse 7. Behold, he is coming with clouds, and every eye will see him even they who pierced him. Now I want to tell you what the Holy Spirit told me about piercing him. It's not just that sword that went into the side. Every time somebody blasphemies the Holy Spirit, every time somebody speaks horrible things about God or Jesus, they are piercing him. The words spoken pierce the people that we say hateful, hurtful, 
harmful things to that are born again, spirit-filled believers. You are piercing Jesus' side again when you do it. So you can act haughty, you can act hateful, you can be mean, nasty, ugly, but you, if they're born again, filled with the Holy Ghost, you just hurt Jesus. It's called repentance, y'all. It's called repentance. Be, be a quick repenter. I'm going to read 7 all over again. Behold, he is coming with clouds, and every eye will see him, even they who pierced him. And all the tribes of the earth will mourn him, will mourn because of him. Even so. Amen. Jesus is talking now. He says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Says the Lord, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Let's go to Revelation 21. Verse 7. And I'm going to read what Jesus says. Behold, I am coming. I never knew Jesus to lie. No word in his words that ever show he lied. I am coming quickly. Blessed is he who keeps the words of the prophecy of this book. Verse 12. And behold, I am coming quickly. And my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his work. Verse 13, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. The first and the last. He, verse 20, he who testifies to these things say, says, surely I am coming quickly. Amen. Even so, come Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all of you.